Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I know that it has been a long time since I have sat down and recorded anything or posted any updates. Shortly after my first trimester is when everything started happening with coronavirus. But while everyone else was quarantining, I was still working as a nanny. Um, so I was still working five days a week. And then I actually started an Etsy business. So <laughs> I have the baby here, which I'll introduce him in a minute. But um, I actually started an Etsy business. And so I would spend all week um, nannying and then the weekends doing my Etsy stuff. So I was pretty business, pretty busy throughout my um Whole pregnancy so we now officially have our little boy here his name is Liam John <laughs> so he is he loves to grunt <laughs> he has a little scratch on his face I just cut his nails but he is absolutely perfect oh I know so he is four weeks old today and the last four weeks have been interesting trying to adjust to everything um, healing has been a lot harder than I anticipated so it has made this adjustment even harder because with being a nanny and being around babies a lot I kind of knew what to expect but doing it while recovering has been a challenge. But I wanted to make a video today talking all about my birth story. So um, I wanted to make a video about my birth story to kind of, even though like I haven't updated on my channel for a while, I really wanted to make a video about my birth story to reach out to other girls who or other women who might go through the same thing because it was the scariest day of my life and I want others to realize that they aren't alone and that even though it is scary kind of prepare for that in a sense like I went in with the mindset of I could it, something could go wrong but it won't it wouldn't happen to me but it did <laughs> so um, I want others to realize that don't go in expecting it to be sunshine and rainbows go in with that um, the mindset of at least this would have helped me going in with that mindset of something could go wrong because when it did go wrong it really really scared me and it kind of affected me mentally so and emotionally so um it would have helped me to have that mindset of something could go wrong because watching all these other birth stories and birth vlogs it was just kind of oh i went in i labored for hours and i pushed him out and that was it and that was not how mine was at all. So if you end up just watching him this whole video and not listening to anything I say, I really don't blame you because he's so cute. And he loves his stretches and he loves sleeping with his head up. <laughs> all right, so, um, Leading up to my birth, I once I hit about 37 weeks, I knew that I was full term, so I slowly started doing things, not like crazy, um, trying to get him out, but just like the birthing ball, and um, what else did we do? Um, curb walking, and just walking up and down the stairs, um, 
I did the tea, like the um, raspberry leaf tea, but I've heard that that doesn't necessarily kickstart labor. It just helps prepare your body for labor and helps like soften your cervix and everything. Um, I also, what else did we do? Oh, and I also ate dates. So I only did that for like two days because it, it's not that they tasted nasty, it's just the texture was really gross. So then I started putting it in smoothies. So that made it better. But, um, so I had him on a Friday. That Thursday, I woke up and I was super, super crabby all day. I felt exhausted. I was barely doing anything to like help kickstart labor, but I just was on the couch all day constantly taking naps and I felt like I was getting the flu like those body aches and you just feel sick and gross and you're just in a bad mood and you just don't feel good that's how I felt all day Thursday so I was thinking like maybe this is a sign of something but I doubt it but we'll see um to backtrack that Wednesday before um, I lost my mucus plug in the morning. I lost, I thought it was all of it, but then I kept losing it um, more Wednesday night, like a little bit, bits and pieces, and then a little bit on Thursday, and then now to Friday morning. Um, I woke up around 5.30 in the morning to go pee for the millionth time that night. And, um, woke up to go pee and had a little bit more of the mucus plug and, um, I started like leaking a little bit of fluid. Also, I had tested positive for group B strep. So, um, they said as soon as my water breaks, I would have to call immediately and go in because the water bag would protect him. From getting it um, but as soon as that water bag breaks he's um, he there's a chance that he could get it so I started like leaking a little bit of fluid so I was like I doubt that it's anything but hopefully and I put on a pad to see if it was enough to soak the pad so when I like stood up and walked around I still felt fluid leaking so I was like, I'm going to call um, the hospital just in case and say like it might have broken, but I'm not sure. So I went downstairs um, on the couch so that I wouldn't wake up Rob just in case it was a false alarm. And um, it was like the answering service and all I said was, I think my water might be leaking. I'm not 100% sure, um, but I did test positive for group B strep. So I wanted to call just in case. So they're like, okay, we'll have your doctor call you back in like the next 20 minutes. So as soon as I hung up the phone, I stood up and I had a huge gush. So I ran up, changed my pad and um, went and woke up Rob and was like, my water officially broke. And he is so stretchy. Um, when woke him up and said my water officially broke, so we should start getting ready to head to the hospital because once they call me back, um, I'm sure they're going to tell us to go in. So sure enough, like right when Rob got up, they called me back and I was like, yeah, I was thinking it might've broken, but now I know it officially broke. So do I come in? And they said, yes. So, um... Rob got in the shower because I wasn't having contractions yet and we live about 20 minutes away from the hospital. So Rob um, got in the shower really quick and I started getting all the last minute stuff for our hospital bags like um, a pillow for him and a blanket for him since I knew he was going to have to sleep on that uncomfortable couch and um, like our, we already had chargers and stuff. Um, but all of the last minute stuff 
changed my pants, changed my pad again, and um, was getting ready to head to the hospital. So we have three floors in our house. So um, with walking up and down, I was having a little bit of period cramps, but, uh, or period leg -like cramps, but it wasn't anything crazy. But as we got closer and closer to heading to the hospital, um, it was getting intense. So I kept on having to take breaks. So after walking up and down the stairs for a while, I um, started getting, the, the cramps started coming on stronger and I had to like stop and concentrate and breathe through them. Um, I don't even know what to compare the contractions to. I don't know because it was like radiating down my legs. It was like really, really, really intense period cramps that like were a whole new level that I've never felt before. So I, <clears throat> we loaded up the car and started heading to the hospital and every bump made my water gush out more and um, made my water gush out more and was just really intense. So my contractions started getting really, really close together and they were getting really intense. So we got to the hospital around seven in the morning. So it was about an hour and a half of laboring so far, even though 5.30 was just when my water started leaking, so I don't even know if I would consider that laboring, but, um, so we got to the hospital around 7. By the time we got there and we parked the car, my contractions were so intense that I had to keep on, like, squatting down next to the car. Um, when we got to, like, the crosswalk, I was thinking, like, I really hope I don't have to, like, squat down in this in this crosswalk and everything. It was just really intense. So, um, my mindset was, since I had never gone through labor before, my mindset was, this is just the beginning. I had gotten checked um, the week before, and I was dilated to a zero, and I was 50% effaced. So I was thinking, I'm probably still like only like a one or a two, if that, and it's probably, this is probably going to get a lot, a lot worse. So I am so glad that I had groupie strep because I would have tried to labor at home and I would have still had that mindset of this is just the very, very beginning and it's going to get a lot worse and it's going to take me hours and hours to labor because that's what everyone else does, especially with their first baby. So, um, we got in again, had to keep on squatting down in the hallway to get to labor and delivery. Um, they, it was funny because Rob told me later that when I was like squatting down in the hallway, people were walking past and like looking at me all weird, like, what is this woman doing? And then, um, they would like get around to the front of me and see my big belly and be like, oh, okay, congratulations. <laughs> so... We got um, up to labor and delivery, and of course, at the nurse's station, they're like, oh, can we see your ID? Can we see um, your insurance card? And so I'm just like throwing it at them, like, get me into a room now. So when we got into the room, I immediately changed into a gown. I immediately started throwing up. Um, it was just really, really intense, painful contractions. They checked me and I was at a four and 90% effaced. So I was progressing pretty quick. Um, but again, I didn't know what I was starting at at 5.30 in the morning because it had been a week and a half since I had been checked. So, um, they asked me can we get you anything? And I immediately said, I want the epidural. So from there, I was just laying there on my side. 
I was just clenching the um, the bed like white knuckled and there was a clock right there and so I just kept on staring at the clock and counting in my head and just trying to breathe through it. I felt really bad for Rob because in all of the labor and delivery videos they always show how can the men support um, support the women and it shows them like rubbing their back and and touching them and talking them through it and all that stuff I could not be touched every time Rob touched me it was like it made the pain so much worse because my whole body hurt and so I was like I'm sorry please do not touch me and um, he couldn't talk like it, it, I just needed it really silent so I could focus and breathe through it I wasn't one of those ones that was screaming I wasn't I didn't have to make any noise through it I just needed to sit there and um, and be quiet have everyone else quiet and not be touched so the nurses would come in to be honest I think I blacked out during most of the labor the nurses kept on coming in and saying like they would need labs for like they would need to take my blood for certain lab work and um, just different things and I just remember just holding up my arm and just being like do what you need to do like try to t not to touch me and try not to anything I just need to breathe through this just tell me when the epidural is here I remember at one point the anesthesiologist I can never say that word um, came in and was like oh uh, oh is she resting like turned to Rob and was like oh is she resting and he's like uh no she she's having pretty intense contractions and so he's like oh well I'm in here just to ask you a few questions and to be honest I don't even remember what the questions were and um, I think it was just like any allergies anything like that so he's like all right we're still just waiting on your blood work so by the time the blood work and everything came back, that was around 9 a.m. And um, so again, we got there at 7 a.m. That was around 9 a.m. So they had Rob leave the room. I remember they had me sit up and my contractions were so close together that um, I don't even remember if they have to do it during a contraction, but um, they can't have you move during it. So they were like, okay, let us know when this contraction's over. And they were lasting so long and were so close together that, like, I remember he kept on saying, okay, is it done? Is it done? And then he would, like, look at the monitor and see it going down. But even when it was going down, like, it was still really intense. And so um, he just kept on saying, like, okay, are, are you good? And I was like, no, I need to just give me a second. So we finally got the epidural um, as soon as I sat up for that epidural too I was almost throwing up again thankfully I didn't um, and at least I don't remember if I did I remember they had to give me a bag um, so we I got the epidural and again it was only two hours since I had gotten there and when I got there I was at a four and 90% effaced so um, they were like okay we're going to check you so at that point I was feeling great because I had gotten the epidural and they checked me and I was at a 9 and 100% effaced and I was about ready to push so I was a little frustrated that they didn't check me right before the epidural because if I had known that I was already basically ready to push then I would have just um, not gotten the epidural because when they gave me the epidural they put it so strong because I was in so much pain that I could not feel anything I couldn't feel if my legs were up down like I couldn't feel a thing and it terrified me I I really did not like it so by the time they checked me and I was already ready to push they were like okay we're gonna start doing some practice pushes I could not tell if I was pushing at all and I didn't like that I didn't like not being in control 
of my body and uh, I just really didn't like it. So they came in, had me do some practice pushes and then they um, were like, okay, we're going to come back in about 30 minutes and um, have you push for real. So they came back in around 30 minutes later. So this was um, probably a little after 10. And um, what I didn't know was when I first got there, and they hooked me up to the monitor, every contraction, his heart rate was dropping. And I didn't realize that. Um, they had mentioned something, but I didn't realize the extent that it was dropping. So they, as soon as I got there, um, the midwife that, so the place that I go to, um, the doctor's office that I go to, they have a team of midwives and so they had me see like each midwife throughout my pregnancy so that way when it comes time to deliver I'm not being um he's not being delivered by some stranger that I don't know when I first got there the midwife that was there was the woman that I saw for my 37 week checkup just four days earlier so when I first got hooked up to the monitors um I heard her say to one of the other nurses something about his heart rate, but I didn't realize that it was that bad. So when she was leaving, they actually didn't call the next midwife that was supposed to be there, which I loved that midwife too. Um, but they didn't end up calling her. They actually ended up calling a doctor because they saw how bad it, his heart rate was dropping, and I didn't realize that. So what was also scary is during my labor, when I was just sitting there like white knuckle gripping the bed and trying to breathe through the contractions, I would hear his heart rate um, dropping with every contraction. And I wanted to say something so bad to Rob, but I was in so, such bad pain that I couldn't talk. So I remember just thinking if it's bad enough, um, the nurses, the, the nurses are looking at the monitor, so they'll be able to see something, and they can step in if, if something is is bad enough. So, um, they came in, told me it was about time to push. So, they had me start pushing regular, like on my back, and um, again, couldn't feel my legs, couldn't feel anything. I just kept on stopping and saying, am I pushing? Am I doing it? And they were like, yeah, you're doing great. And I was like, cause I can't feel anything. And they were like, no, you're pushing great. So after a few minutes of pushing that way, she, um, had more nurses come in and she all of a sudden said, okay, I want you to roll onto your right side or onto your left side and I want you to push that way and so I was like I can't I don't basically like trying to say like I don't want to go that way like but if I need to I can but um I was like I can't roll like I can't I can't feel my legs and she was like you need to pull with all of your all of your might and roll onto your side and push that way so I rolled onto my left side push like that for not even a minute and probably just a few seconds and then they quickly were like okay now you need to roll onto your right side and so again had to like pull with all my might and they had to like roll me onto my right side and um they weren't explaining anything they were just they sound really panicked and so then they said okay you need to get on your hands and knees and push and the other nurses were like, she has no control of her legs at all. They, she can't get on her hands and knees. And the doctor said, get her on her hands and knees right now. So they quickly, like, five nurses came over and, like, hoisted me up and put me on my hands and knees. And they were like, okay, we want you to start pushing. And even before I could take a full breath to start pushing on my hands and knees, they said, um, okay, sweetie we are gonna um take you to the OR now and I remember just looking at Rob like 
terrified and panicked and was like, does he get to, to go with me too? And they said, yes, we just need to prep him, but we have to get you there first and, um, and get you, pre and get you prepped. So even before I could like say anything, they were already like rushing and wheeling me out the room. And, um, I remember just going, then pushing me down the hallway and screaming at each other. His heart rate is dropping lower. His heart rate is dropping lower. Get her there now. <laughs> As he's grunting. So that is when I realized how scary it was and how he could have died. So they were pushing me into OR and I started crying because I was so scared and they put me onto the surgical table and I remember them just there were so many people in there there was probably like 20 people in there and they were all just screaming things at each other saying how his heart rate is really low and um, I remember just being absolutely terrified and crying and thank, thankfully that anesthesiologist uh, came in and he actually like went over top of me and was like, everything's going to be okay. It's just you and I here. Do not listen to the nurses. They have it covered. Don't focus on that. Just focus on me. I just gave you, they gave me like a spinal tap. He's like, I just gave you some medicine and, um, he just helped talk me through it and um, helped calm me down and assured me that everything was going to be okay. So obviously I couldn't feel anything from the surgery, thankfully. Um, I had the epidural and the spinal tap and I found out later that they gave me morphine as well. So they cut me open and were able to get him out, thankfully. And um, Rob came in like right when he was about to come out from what I can remember. <laughs> and that's what Rob was saying as well. He said when he came in, the like blue tarp that they put in front of your face, they had it like, he was like, it was huge. He, he couldn't see anything. And so, um, what was also scary was when they pulled him out, they were saying like, of course, there's going to be some pressure. You're going to feel some tugging. And when they pulled him out, um, I remember them saying happy birthday and they were all excited, but he wasn't crying. So I remember turning to Rob and was like, why isn't he crying? And was really worried, but then he started crying and then everything was good. So it might have been the scariest day of my life, just hearing his heart rate drop, how fast everything was. As I said, we got to the hospital at 7 a.m. and we had him at 10.49 a.m. So it was very fast, but I am so thankful for that doctor and for the team of nurses that all knew when the time was to step in and do surgery instead of um, pushing him out vaginally. Um, the doctor came in later to check on me and she said that the reason that his heart rate was dropping very low was the cord was wrapped around his neck. Mm -hmm. And so with every push, um, it was wrapping tighter around his neck and was um, suffocating him, so, or strangling him. So, we are, we are so thankful that he's here and he's perfect. And I'm so, so glad that it went well. Like I said, recovery has been rough. Um, 
I, in my mind, thought that I was going to have a vaginal delivery. I had everything prepared for a vaginal delivery. I, I knew that it was a possibility, obviously, that we could have a C-section, um, but I didn't have anything really prepared for that. So, um, having some of the vaginal delivery recovery on top of the um, c-section recovery has been rough on my body like I said it was rough mentally and emotionally at first just because I wasn't prepared for it it was really really scary it was really really fast which I was not prepared for which also scared me um, I think the worst part of recovery has been um, not necessarily my incision, but like up on my actual stomach near like, it's like more of my lower stomach near where like my stretch marks are, which of course I didn't have any stretch marks my entire pregnancy up until 35 weeks. So um, I thought that it was my stretch marks that were really hurting me but it turns out that it's actually my nerve endings if you think about it they cut through your nerves to get to the baby so it's my nerve endings reattaching so that has been the most painful for me um because by the end of the day there my stomach is just really really sore and um it, it feels like a burning sensation all over my stomach. But he was born at 37 weeks and four days and was eight pounds, was eight pounds, five ounces. So I can't imagine how much he would have weighed if he went another two and a half weeks. But we are so happy and thankful that he's here and that he's healthy and safe and we just love him so much <laughs> he is just so sweet so thank you guys so much for watching and hopefully I find the time to give some more updates on this little boy. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.